All right, I'm finished with this alcohol ink painting. Now what do I do? I'm gonna talk you through the steps for sealing and protecting it with resin. Hang on. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. So I'm gonna talk you guys through what I do with an alcohol ink painting after I've gotten it finished. And this is about mainly how to protect the painting and sealing it in. So this particular piece here is done with a couple of different varieties of brands of alcohol ink, but I wanna pay close attention to the metal that's in the background. This is Alloy by Ranger and it is very delicate and now you can use blending solution and it helps it bond with the background but if you don't do it it when you rub your finger across you will pick up particles so be very very mindful of those kind of things some some metal additives or even if you mix in mica powders with your alcohol they're very sensitive to coming off with your fingers so after you're done with your painting you go and seal it as soon as you can so what I've done with this, and because it's a very windy day, I can't really show it outside, but I use Krylon UV Archival Spray, but I use the matte. And the reason I use the matte is it doesn't reactivate alcohol inks. The gloss will. Now, I put on several coats of this. Some people do a couple. And if I'm gonna apply resin immediately over it, I might just do a couple coats and and then get jump right onto the resin but i knew this was going to sit for a little bit so i went ahead and i applied um what i do is i do a quick pass one direction i go back wait for it to dry for a moment it doesn't take long if it's outside and then i go another pass in this direction come down go back up wait for a moment and then i do a, a the final third which is almost like six coats six light coats of this. Now I can run my finger across the top of this. I don't recommend you do that. And see, there's no metal coming off. So it's got a nice seal on there, so it's nice and happy, and a little bit of UV protection from the actual spray itself. So this stuff, highly recommend, really great stuff. And I'll put the links in the description below so you get this. So the next part, as an extra boost of UV protection. And what I also like about it is it's got some scratch resistance in there as well. But this is my go-to resin when it comes to creating art. And that's from Stone Coat Art Coat. Um, you've heard me talk about this stuff a lot, but I'm not just talking about it like as if they've endorsed me or anything, because they, they haven't. But, but because it's also a very nice product. It has done really, really well for me. Um, get about two, two and a quarter hours of working time, which is a lot when it comes to resin, but it has a high UV protection for my artwork. And that is the biggest thing right there because I created this piece. I'm really happy with this piece. Alcohol inks have a tendency to be a very sensitive, um, to UV, um, light. So first off, I wouldn't recommend you putting it next to a window, but to help out the painting, I will do the combination. It's like a one-two punch, if you want to call it, of these two products here. And that really, really helps out. So I'm going to get set up and we're going to get to mixing and put a nice coat of resin on this. So hang on. All right. So my next step is to hit the backs of these guys with some liquid latex. Um, and literally, I think this stuff kind of almost self-explanatory. It's used with uh, makeup special effects, like uh, for doing, you know, like in movies and stuff like that. They want to create monsters and they make scars and things like that. Um, but the product itself goes on super, super easy. You just dab it on. Um, and this is to help out with drips and clean up afterwards. Now, I will tell you this much, when you're putting this stuff on, don't leave it on your piece for like a month or something like that because then it has a tendency to change. 
it's meant for like short term applications. Um, like, uh, let's say I pour today, my resin sets up, uh, tomorrow it's, you know, I'm able to touch it and, and uh, start cleaning up some stuff. Uh, but I don't want to wait for like a week or two before I clean up all the drips because the, the latex kind of changes textures a little bit and gets, start to get sticky in it and it's a little harder to remove. But anyway, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. So why I've got this on is when I'm doing the resin on my alcohol ink pieces, uh, drips are an issue. When um, the resin moves down your uh, painting on the side and it comes on the edge there and it starts setting up, you'll get these little drips. So with the li liquid latex, they're easy. They just snap off real easy because it doesn't really bond to the latex at all. So it makes cleanup of those drips really easy. Now, if you're doing multiple, multiple layers, I'd recommend, you know, every time you do a layer, uh, as soon as it's cured, go ahead and clean it up. And don't let the, the drips build up and build up and build up because then it may be difficult to clean up. But if you're doing like one pour, maybe two pushing it, um, then this stuff works out super easy uh, for cleanup. And then the, the liquid latex will just peel up, kind of like rubber cement. Um, not quite like uh, Elmer's glue. Remember how you would put it in your hands and let it dry and then you would kind of peel it up? Not quite the same thing, but it's more like rubber cement where it'll ball up and peel off in long rubbery strips. So yeah, it does, it does help for uh, cleaning up your artwork and the, the uh, resin drips really easily. I think I just got it on the side by accident. So I've got another video that talks a little bit more about liquid latex and gives you a breakdown of how to use it and such. But I didn't want to leave it out of this piece because it is part of the flake coat process. And I do want to show you this. So a lot of times with my alcohol inks, when I work on a piece, the colors will run down the side. And I do kind of encourage that a little bit because I like it, to be honest with you. And a lot of times I'll go ahead and I'll paint the backs of it and the inside all black, but I'll leave the color as it comes down on the side. So when I do my flood coats, I will not only put resin on this side, but I'll also put a little bit on this side. So it kind of, it's almost like adding a little uh, layer of varnish to the edges. It, it just adds a nice little touch. All right, I'm gonna let this sit and dry and I'll get back to the next step. All right, one other thing I wanna point out. When I do have a finished piece of artwork and I need to work on the back in any way, shape or form, whether it's to, to do the black painting like I was talking about on the back to finish out the piece, the liquid latex, and I'm having the artwork facing down, I always make sure that I put down a clean towel or something soft to protect my artwork. So this is again, once the painting is finished, I try to treat it as if I'm not going to scratch it. So I do whatever protection I can to make sure it stays intact. So I definitely wanted to make sure I, I said that. I do have some other towels that I have for like when I want to put something face down and spray the sides of it. Those are not the towels to use in this case when you want to protect your artwork. You want to make sure you have a clean towel, something soft um, that will protect the piece. So keep that in mind because, you know, if somebody buys it and then you're finishing it out afterwards, you want to make sure you take care of their piece that they purchased. So, okay. When working with resin, sometimes it's tricky to know how much to use of resin to cover your piece, like uh, to do a flood coat in this case. Um, let me give you some info. First off, my painting is 12 by 12 square. And there are two calculators that I know online that you can go to that gives you a good guideline. Um, artresin.com has a nice calculator that you can just search in resin calculator and you'll come up with two of them. One of them is from artresin.com and the other one is from Just Resin. And they will both give you a guideline. Um, like for example, the 12 by 12 painting that I'm gonna cover up, um, their Art Resin suggests five ounces of resin and Just Resin, um, 
calculator says six. So it gives you a good guideline as far as where to start. Uh, Just Resin Calculator also has one for round uh, paintings as well. So that's really helpful as well as um, both metric and uh, US measurements, in uh, inches in other words. So that's my go-to for looking up how much I use as far as uh, the resin, how much I need on the ounces wise. However, most of the time for me, I do things in batches. Like if I'm gonna flood coat some, I've got five or six different pieces that I'm gonna flood coat. And I will usually mix a whole lot of resin anyway, just to go through the projects and go that, that direction. So I just wanted to give you that information as far as the calculator, because it is super handy. And hopefully, maybe these guys will put up a calculator soon too. But they definitely have some uh, ways of you predicting how much you need as far as figuring out square footage and stuff like that. Because these guys here build a lot of resins for, for countertops, obviously. So they have to do some measurements and figuring out of resin, resin quantities. Okay, so on to the next step, mixing. All right, so I got my resin mixed up, and I got my trusty trusty little timer here. It's a little three-minute timer. I don't need to go exactly three minutes. I need to find one that has two minutes. But um, that way it helps me keep on top of how often I'm mi mixing my resin. I'm really tongue-tied today. I haven't been fighting it, but the words have not been flowing out well for me today. My kids are giving me a hard time. <laughs> but then again, you know, kids like to do that kind of thing, you know. But that's all right. So, um, I just killed a bottle. I was really, really getting low on the remnants. And so I put the bottle inside this cup and allowed like one part of it to drip out uh, and take its time so I can get every last little drippage out of it and then tomorrow I'll do the other part and allow it a chance to drip out too. Now um, I think I mentioned this before but I am mixing a lot more resin than I need to because I'm also doing multiple projects. So it's not just the one painting, it's a bunch. And since I've got to commit to two hours of working time, um, flight coats don't usually take that long to work to do. And I just go ahead and I utilize the time wisely and do more projects. Because I have a quite a stack of paintings to do and also trays in which to put a flight coat on. So we're getting there. I'm probably close to the two minute mark right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the full three minutes. I came across these things on Amazon. Uh, I think it was one of those things like suggested products. You might be interested in this. And I saw one that had like a 10 minute mark. or And it was talking about kids and timeout and such. And I was like, wait a minute. That would be perfect. Because I used to use my uh, stopwatch on my phone all the time. Well, when I'm using the phone for videoing, it don't have access to my stopwatch anymore. So it's like, okay, gotta come up with a plan B. So they have some that are like one minute, three minute. I think there's a five minute one, uh, like I mentioned 10, and I think you can get a 20 minute one. So it can come in handy for things like, um, say you're working with mica powders and you need to come back and do additional techniques on them. You know, let the mica powders rest for a little bit and wait for the resin to get set up so that you can get to the next phase of waking up your uh, mica powders or adding alcohol mica mixes to it and causing reactions and such. You have um, some stopwatches that can, or little sand things that can do, keep track of the time for you. So let me clean this up. Okay, so my latex has had a chance to dry, and it dries transparent. It's going to be a little tacky to the touch, and it is ready. So let me get rid of my towel here. Lob it. 
And I've got some painter's pyramids right here, and this will allow my painting to be raised up and the resin to drip down on the board if it needs to drip. Right, flip my guy over, set it down, and we are good to go. So I've got a torch handy, especially with a flood coat. I'll apply the uh, clear resin on it, allow it to sit for a moment, and then hit it with a, a torch. You can do heat gun as well. If you're using uh, Stone Coat Countertops resin, uh, me and the Countertops formula, a torch will probably behave a little bit better with it or it reacts better with a torch than uh, a heat gun. But I find the art coat, it can go either way. And most of the time I end up using a, a heat gun because that's what I've got out and I'm using already. But in this case, I've got my torch out. So let me get the towel handy. I'm just gonna, and you can see I've got my resin mixed up. There's some bubbles in there, and it does have some degassing in there, but you need to be mindful of the bubbles. I've been used to doing some skin coats lately, so I'm not used to doing flood coats in a while, but that's all right. I'll get the hang of it again. All right. So usually what you want to do is push it up close to the edge for a little bit. So what I do is I try to go different points first, then I move to the middle zones and then start working it around. And at the very end, I get over to the end and go over. So let's go to the corner. And that allows you to have some even coverage. If you're doing large pieces, you can trowel it, but if you're doing artwork, you might not want to trowel it because you might get scratch up your color and we don't want that to happen. So you see there, it's kind of, in, it evens it out pretty quickly. And now I can move it over to the edge. I'm just very gently trying to get it over. And having good lights right here helps out immensely because you look at the angles to make sure that you're completely covered up. I mean, your surface is covered with resin. And I usually end up with quite a bit on my gloves from moving it around with my hands. But I prefer doing that just so that I don't hurt my my artwork. Let's see. You can find dry spots and you can usually tap them with your, your fingers of your gloves just to build up that surface tension so the resin will flow there. Okay, so I've got quite a bit on my hands right now and so I'm just kind of rubbing it on the sides just to get a thin, thin coat. And remember, like I said before, it kind of acts like it's um. Like you're varnishing the sides there. It might encourage it to run down the sides a little bit. That's okay. Because I've got that latex there. It definitely does a shimmy with the, the pyramids underneath. Alright. Just making sure I got everything... Covered and I do. It feels like it. Okay. So I will scrape off my hands into my big resin cup just to get every last little drop that might be wasted otherwise out. And I'll go ahead and change out my gloves too. You can have um, an alcohol rag ready to clean off your gloves if you want, or uh, paper towels. And since alcohol is kind of at a, uh, well, let's just say it's rarity right now. <laughs> I've been using paper towels and sometimes changing on my gloves. Okay, so let me look from the sides. So if you look at different angles, 
with your light. You can see things like items in your resin. Look for dots in a row and that may give an indication of a hair. Like I've got several dots in a row here. And just by running something across it very carefully, might be able to pick it up and that wasn't anything. It just happened to be dots in a row. All right, let me hit this with a little bit of surface tension needed there. All right, I'm gonna hit with the torch and you move fairly quickly. You just wanna pop the bubbles. You're not trying to heat it up because if you heat it up, it'll flow over your edges. All right, I don't think I did, did a good enough job because I'm seeing a whole lot of bubbles. much better all right for some reason this one spot all right so I've got some drips here I'm gonna add it right to that one area and if you're handling your painting beforehand without gloves sometimes you can transfer oils from your hand onto your painting and you might get that little resistance to resin so that's why you're always constantly looking around at different angles at your piece to get what you need. And I'll bring you in and move you around at different angles and you'll see what I'm talking about real quick. All right. And if you do it right, you'll have this glassy type of look. And it, especially with alcohol inks, man, it really makes it pop. So let me bring you in and angle. Because you already know what the piece looks like. Okay. So you can see how you can see those glares. But by doing that and moving it around, like you can see there's a couple bubbles right there where the, the hot spots are. But you can really get to looking about, you know, a little bit of, might be thinner in that area. But resin is self-leveling. So it will level off. But it's a really great way of, when you get in the angle, you can see all, any kind of dust or debris that, to get that out before it cures up. Um, another thing, because it's self-leveling, make sure your piece is level before you set it aside to uh, dry or wherever it's gonna cure, I should say, make sure it's level at. So otherwise you'll have a lot of drippage on one side or the other, or if you've got color within your resin, it could be like, instead of being nice and centered, like you might've wanted it, it could be off to the side or even on the tray, which would be awful. So this is gonna turn out nice and purty. And I'll probably hit it with a heat gun in about like three minutes, just for one last pass. But that's how you do a flip coat. Pretty simple, huh? All right, one last thing. I've got my painting on my tray here and I'm putting it into a nice dust-free zone. Now this one happens to be a baker's rack and my cookie sheets, I've just got parchment paper, which naturally resin doesn't stick to very well. But what it allows me to do is have multiple projects set up and I've got a cover here. I mean, I just drop it down, bring the zippers down, and the bugs won't get at it. And in Texas, that's kind of an important thing. But if you don't have something this fancy, uh, and I say fancy because, well, it kind of is a little bit, uh, use a box that's larger than your piece. Just make sure it's taller than your piece. Uh, a cardboard box does fine. I've got a couple of cardboard boxes around that I use for larger pieces. Um, you can even set up some uh, plastic cups around, put a, a big flat piece of cardboard on top, drape a drop cloth over that. Just make sure you're far away from your piece that the drop cloth doesn't come in and stick to the side. But um, yeah, definitely want a dust-free zone to keep your uh, resin nice and crystal clear on top. Later. All right, so pay attention. This is before. And then I have a little video clip of after. So you can see a definite difference from before putting resin on to after and how much 
alcohol link really comes alive, I think. Uh, brings out the richness. I don't know. Just brings out a lot more depth to it. So I really encourage people to go that extra step and not just sealing it, but um, applying resin and, to your alcohol ink piece. But definitely put one in there that's got UV protection on it. Might as well. Pretty. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video, there you are.